I eat you. I eat you up. That's a candle. It's a candle, yes. See the little wick? Well, I'd certainly like to set it on fire, yes. No. I've never I've had this thing for years and I've never lit it because I don't want to like have a big hole in my poor hippo's back. That would make me sad. <laughs> nah, it wouldn't make me sad. I'd I'd be like, burn, burn. It's because you are a bad person with no soul. I am. I really am. Thanks for noticing. How are you this week? Doing okay. Um, sounds like you've had a bit of a week. I had a fire. Yeah, you had a lot of stuff. I just, you know, worked a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I had. You worked a lot. I had fire. Yeah. No, I just, I just worked in the lipstick mines a lot. Yeah, for, for, but we have something in common. My dad's also still in the hospital, so yeah. I feel your pain on that. For those of you just joining us, um, while I was editing this weekend, uh, the power supply for my monitor caught fire while I was at my desk. Suddenly, I'm working on the video, and then there's smoke, and then flame. So that that was the shit I go through to put stuff out for you guys. So Yeah, I didn't have anything catch fire this week. This week? There's always next mm -hmm. week. Hold out hope. Yeah. So, where do we start this week? Oh, we've we almost almost kind of got a theme going here this week. Don't we kind of always have a theme? Well, yeah, but Stupid, above fucked up people above and beyond. I mean, um, and the theme this week, with one exception. Seems to be travel and transportation. Getting to where you want to go and leaving a trail of crazy in your wake. Awesome. <laughs> I like that, that, that hesitant. Awesome. Oh no. Oh god. Alright, so shall we begin? Let's begin. Alright. Each week, Catherine goes out. The worldwide interwebs brings back all sorts of horrible shit. For all of us here in a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And I, I let's start this week with a glaringly obvious thing. Remember the whole Facebook is going to ruin the entire world because everything you do will be forever on Facebook, right? Remember? Yeah. Well, let's get started with that yet again. Uh, let me get you the link. One second here. So, um, there was a oh for fuck's sake god damn unprofessional as fuck computer unprofessional as fuck okay so uh, don't you hate it when the fucking computer is unprofessional yeah i do so we, we all know that gas prices are through the roof and of course a lot of people are resorting to thieving gas but this is not who you steal from oh i saw this yeah. This is from Kentucky. Uh, on 18, uh, April 18th, a Kentucky man is facing a misdemeanor rap after he siphoned gasoline from a police car. A theft that came to the attention of the cops after the perp posted a Facebook photo memorializing the crime. Smoking Gun reports the man, 20 year old Kentucky resident Michael Baker, is fucking. Uh, fucking. Oh, well, he's. Going to be fucked. Uh, is facing a misdemeanor charge. Imagine if I was on actual network TV, I'd be fired right now for saying that. You yeah. would have been fired a long time ago. I let's would, be honest. Um. Of okay. It just this is this is uh from his Facebook page. Quote: Just got out of jail. Yeah, lol. I went to jail. Everything is misspelled over Facebook. Uh, responding to a friend who had not seen the image before it was yanked, Baker assured, quote, Yeah, lol, you would have just to seen it. It was funny as hell, though. I'd call this fellow recidivist. Yeah, he didn't go to jail over Facebook. No. He went to jail over fucking theft. Yes. Uh, but 
welcome back to Be a Better Criminal with Tara. Don't post evidence of your crimes on Facebook. If you're going to commit a crime, don't take a picture of yourself committing that crime and put that shit on the internet because that makes you a moron. It also makes you caught. It's not just your friends looking. You'd like to think that'd be obvious. It's not. The internet is for everyone. Everyone can get on the internet. Everyone. Yeah. Your fucking washing machine is on the goddamn internet. Everyone, everywhere. They, they, they figured doing, out. What would a washing machine be doing on the internet? Dude, they've put Android on a fucking washing machine. You can run your goddamn washing machine from your phone. I shit you not. I bet you the washing machines have a whole chat room about where the other sock is. <laughs> Because those bastards know. <laughs> yes. It's a fucking conspiracy. Uh, so um, that's when you don't want police. Um, our next story is about what happens when you you do want police. Just just not for this. This is not what the police are for. Um, this comes from Arizona. Airline passenger complains to police about attendant waking him. 37-year-old Arizona man filed a police complaint against a flight attendant who tapped him on the knee with a magazine to wake him up. Kevin Johnson told Indianapolis Airport Police he was sleeping in the back row of a chartered millionaire, millionaire flight uh, when the incident happened. Johnson said he slept and the t plane taxied the gate. He was, quote, rudely interrupted by a flight attendant. Johnson said the attendant struck him on his knee with a magazine, but he could not identify which attendant it was. Officer Ricky Seconds wrote that Johnson, quote, had no physical signs of injury, no complaint of pain, and no paralysis from the magazine. <laughs> See, that's you got to love a cop who just knows when to be a dick. I'll tell you, cause, buddy, fuck you. All Clearly, the flight attendant's biggest mistake was not hitting this bitch on the nose with the rolled-up magazine. He needs it. All of the fuck you. How dare this person attempt to get your overdressed, rich ass, one percent motherfucker off their plane, so they could potentially clean it and use it for other oh, other people. Oh yeah, because what did, was he expecting them to just leave that plane in the gate while he had his nap until he was ready to wake up? Yeah, I'm just. That's not how the world works. Come back. You got to get the fuck off that plane. Come back in an hour. I'm not done yet. Yeah, like that's not how the world works because there are other people who want to use that plane and want it to be on time. The the just the mentality here. And if you if you want to just nap as long as you want on a plane and not be bothered, get yourself a private motherfucking jet. Yeah, not a charter one with other people. It's, you know, you go buy yourself the G6. I know there's no such thing as a G6. Shut up. I can already hear the comments. There's no such, Todd said, no such, there's no G6. Shut up. Shut up. Um, but, it, you know, the mentality here, the idea that somewhere along the line, someone taught him this was what police were for. Yeah. Not protecting us from violent murderous people not solving crimes not you know just protect and serve no no it's for dealing with his inconveniences yeah well that's probably what the private police force at his gated community where he lives are for uh, go and get rid of the riffraff what the fuck just pisses me off but of course, in this case, he was in the wrong. No, no, this next one's in the wrong, too. I, I, I'm trying to think of some way where she could possibly be in the right. So we've all had, if you, you've, you've, you've flown, obviously you've flown. I've flown. Yeah, I don't like it. Flying, to, I'm terrified of airplanes. Have you ever, you ever used your, your computer or your, your iPod or whatever on the plane? Yeah. And you know, you get to that point where they say, hey, you need to you gotta turn shut it off. 
What if I sucks out? for me because like takeoff is the worst part. Yeah. And I would really love to have that fucking iPod spitting out some music that would allow me to ignore the whole takeoff process. And I can't. And that's really upsetting to me. Well, um, this is what happens when you don't. A uh, disruptive Brockton woman pulled off a Boston bound flight. Sounds. Oh, no. What did she do? Get this. Massachusetts woman has been charged with disorderly conduct after she allegedly caused a disturbance on a plane in northern Maine. Um, the uh, officer said Torres allegedly... How do, you spe- how do you pronounce that name? Uh, Mar- Marangale. Marangale. Marangale Torres. Marangale. Ole. That sounds like a dance. Marangale. It's a, that's festive. Uh, officer said Torres allegedly refused to turn off her electronic devices and would not sit down. So the pilot brought the plane back to the gate where police charged the 21 year old with disorderly conduct. I'm sorry. I, I thought the sit the fuck down, shut the fuck up drill was That's universal. pretty standard. Yeah, it's th- there's a reason that the plane is filled with nothing but chairs. There are a lot of things about modern air travel that are annoying, pointless, and, you know, that I can understand you being really put out over. Once you're on the damn plane, just sit down. Like, you cannot stand through the flight because, God forbid, you hit some turbulence, your ass will die. I don't know. I think they debunked the electronic devices thing now, but I, I don't know. But it doesn't matter. Like... That's the rule. It's like 10 minutes of your life. You'll probably get through it. Yeah, even I don't like the electronic thing. But I acknowledge that they are doing it just to be extra cautious, mainly because it's a metal tube going at supersonic speed thousands of feet above the ground. Which is exactly why I hate it. I would kind and would of, love to have my iPod to distract me from all of what you just said. I I would like. But I they don't let me do that, and so I just suck it up with some Dramamine and try to keep my eyes closed and not have a panic attack. And that's how we roll. I I would like to err on the side of caution, <laughs> just to be on just just on the. Yeah, I mean, if if they want to be over cautious about the plane not plummeting out of the sky i am down with that that's perfectly cool. fine i will inconvenience myself as much as possible to keep the fucking plane from plummeting out of the sky and killing me just sit the fuck and, and, and you know all these people who wanted to get where they were going the plane had to turn around go back to the gate and they all had to wait just because of this bitch It's not like she had a heart attack. It's not like, you know, she went into a diabetic coma. No, no, she just wouldn't sit the fuck down, shut the fuck up. She is lucky she got off that plane alive. That's some bullshit right there. Like, and it's the same thing as the other guy. Like, where the fuck do you get off thinking that you have the right to inconvenience everybody else? Like, who are you that is so fucking important that you should be able to just inconvenience everybody else? Oh, the the segue you're giving me here. Um, the segue on this one. So, another aspect of travel and flying that that we're not pleased with right now is the TSA. And you are aware, anyone who has done any kind of travel, the Travel Safety Authority um, has, has what appear to be strange, arbitrary rituals that involve shoes and waving of wands and, uh, Lots of people don't like it. This guy thought he would be the one. You were asking, who do, who do you think you are? Well, he had a novel way of voicing his dislike. Oregon man says naked airport protest was about free speech. This is a really creative way to get our weekly naked allowance. Ah, John Brennan said he did not go to the Portland International Airport intending to get naked because... Well, that's good. 
However, after feeling harassed by Transportation Security Administration screeners on Tuesday, the 50-year-old man stripped off all his clothes in the protest that even that got him even more attention from airport screeners, national headlines, and a stint in jail. I just took off my clothes and said, quote, See, I don't have any explosives, Brennan said. The individuals at TSA are just doing their jobs, and the whole organization needs to find a balance between privacy and safety. They use fear and intimidation, and it's not going to stop ever somewhere. Okay, you're making sense. However, he kind of needs to pick a stance. And That's less than three sentences, and he's like, well, you know, they're just doing their jobs, but they're a totalitarian regime. Pick a stance, dude. Well, like, you can either defend them, or you can be a dick about it. You kind of can't do both, because then you just look stuck wishy-washy. In- I'm still stuck at high penis. You know, it's hello penis. Well, I mean, they have those big old x-ray machines now. But you can't see anything. You can't see it. You and me can't see it. I don't know what the fuck they can see, but we can't, you know, you're going through the machine, you don't see shit. The guys behind it, they're laughing and going, look, cellulite. But, you know, we, we don't get to see shit. But this guy, this, don't, you know, I understand taking a stand for shit. I have taken a stand on several things, not always wisely, not always sensibly, mainly involving me screaming fuck a whole bunch, but I have never taken a stand with my penis. Oh, God. Comment overload. (laughs) Too many jokes. I just, I have it. Too many jokes. Brain malfunction. Brain malfunction. (laughs) What? I, well, I mean, I, I could see where he was going with it, you know? I, I... Well, he says he didn't intend to do this. He just kind of got pissed off and stripped, like yeah. you do. Like you do. This, these who, things who happen. Can really, who can really say they haven't just gotten so angry that they took off all their clothes and yelled that they don't have explosives? I mean, these things happen. Who among us cannot can throw the first stone? Exactly. <laughs> I, <it's, sighs> I mean, to be fair, he did prove that he wasn't carrying any illicit substances. He did not Externally, have... He did not have a bunch of turtles and snakes stuffed in his pants in nylon stockings. He did not have a bunch of little birds sewn into the crotch of his pants. You're looking at the half full here. You're looking at the... With their beaks inexplicably poking him in the dick. He did not have 89 bags of heroin tied to his penis. You know, he did prove that he wasn't really... Externally. Contraband. On the outside. I'm pretty sure not long after this he heard the... Snap. Uh, but... Well, yeah, at that point... Yeah, you know, you're going if you're, that way about it. We're giving you the full treatment, buddy. Uh, so, yeah. so I think we, we've we've established that the airlines can be a bit weird. Um, but uh, that that's not saying driving doesn't have its problems. It's just flying the really really friendly skies. Um. So we're going to Memphis, Tennessee, for this next one, and oh. um. I can see sometimes you really need a ride, but this is not a good way to get it. And also in the course of doing this, I think he started a new religion. A uh, suspect asked Memphis officer if he's Jesus, steals car. Uh, Darius Williams saw the light. It just happened to be blue. You know that reporter was waiting his entire life to write an intro line like that. You just know it. He's been saving it since journalism school. According to the commercial appeal, a police officer found the 19-year-old Williams walking before dawn Thursday along Interstate 240. Police said that ask, after asking if the officer was Jesus, Williams became irate in the back of the police car, pushed down the window, and climbed on top of the vehicle. The officer got out and tried to talk Williams down and ended up in a scuffle with him. Williams got away from the officer, got in the police car, and took off on the wrong way on the freeway. He wrecked a short distance away and was captured. He was charged with felony theft, aggravated assault, and resisting. Well, you know, it's 
maybe he wanted to know if the officer was Jesus before he did all of that. Because he wouldn't do all of that if he was dealing with Jesus. I mean, you don't want to behave that way in front of Jesus. True! Yes, he was just covered. Hey, wait, man. Are you Jesus? Yeah, it's like the prostitutes ask, are you a cop? Before they give you the $50 hand job in your car. You just got to cover your bases because you don't want to behave that way in front of Jesus. So it's like, you're not Jesus? I'm on the roof! Woo! Dude, you can't say pig fucker in front of Jesus. (laughs) This is just some astonishing crazy here. Um, Climbed on the roof, got in a fight with a cop, drove the car. This guy is not going to be a cop for much longer, I don't think. Or said cop left out of the report that he claimed he was Jesus. And when this guy realized the truth, he got really angry. Uh, This cut, this guy. You are bad at your job, sir. You you are... Well, I don't think that's really fair. I mean, can you predict the actions of a crazy person who asks you if you're Jesus and then climbs on top of the car? Well, the That's first... like trying to catch a greased pig <laughs> with oven mitts on. <laughs> I don't think that's fair. I, I think that's asking too much of someone who's only human. I... No, this is, dude. If if you if your suspect gets out of the back of your car, climbs on the roof, and somehow manages to drive your car the wrong way and wreck the motherfucker, you are bad at your job. You, you... No, he's bad at driving. <laughs> now, granted, I don't know how. He, like, I didn't know you could open the back windows of a cop car. Yeah, that's another thing. You, you, you might like. Wanna... I thought the doors and windows only open from the outside in cop cars. So how did he get that window down? Is my question. Someone was bad at their job. Either that, or he had like crazy strength going on. Hmm. Yeah, I am crazy. Maybe he was Jesus. I mean, think about it. Jesus is from a really long time ago. He wouldn't know how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have cars back then. <laughs> Oh, somehow we're all going to hell now. Now? Uh. Now? How long have we been doing this? Uh, it's Okay, so so um we're going to diverge briefly from the whole transportation thing because this one's just too good. Y- you know how have you ever uh, been at work and known one of your coworkers to attempt to use the computer for shall we say less than savory purposes? Sure. By which I mean titties. Mhm. Yeah, um this guy really should have known better. Um judge's computer login used in attempts to view pornography. Oh. Associate Judge Joseph Polito was trusted with one of Will County's most notorious heater cases in 2007 when he presided over Plainsville man Craig Stepik's attempt to divorce his missing wife, Lisa. Now he's at the center of an unsolved riddle of his own. I can't talk tonight. So, what the fuck is a heater case? I, like, do they mean, like, a really hot case, or did probably. it involve a heater? Not, not a very well-written article here, but... Oh. Someone using Judge Polito's computer login and password at the Joylet count- Courthouse has been trying to use computer passwords to view hardcore internet pornography. Polito won't say if it's him, but Chief Judge Gerald R. Kinney has apologized, quote, for any embarrassment this incident has caused. Among the 243... <laughs> 243, mind you. I know, what I love that the article goes to the trouble of naming some of them. Now, that is journalism, people. That's asking the hard questions. No oh. pun intended. Among the 243 porn, porn websites, someone using Polito's computer account attempted to access are chubbyparade.com, hugeheavybreast.com, bigbras.com, bigbrasclub. Bigbrasclub.com. Oh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, because Big Bras Club, totally different. Totally different place. It's exclusive. Yeah. Uh, portofdebauchery.com. Ooh, and that one sounds good. Here's the kicker. Teenagesextape.com. 
Many of the websites have names that can't be printed in a family <laughs> newspaper. Well, yeah, it's porn. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. This is someone clearly not understanding how his computer operates. If you have to put in a login and password, chances are that computer knows what the fuck you're about to do. And this is for you at home, if you at work have ever been tempted to venture into the depths and depravity that is the internet and you have to log into your system at work, your sysadmin now knows exactly what type of porn you like. I've been a sysadmin. It's, it's not fun. It's, it's, it's not. This is, oh, oh, someone, oh, this is beautiful. Uh, Computer Ronin. No wonder justice is blind. Too much porn. That is beautiful, my friend. Justice spent a little too long in the big bras club and her <laughs> eyes put out. Oh my god, just... just. Okay. Yeah, well, the thing is, you have, presumably, if this guy's been a judge for a long time, he's of an older generation that doesn't have as great an understanding of how the internet works. But you probably have... You're a judge, dude. Like, you've probably presided over cases involving stuff computer people did on their computers. Yeah. And so you should at least have a vague idea that stuff you do on your computer can be seen by other people. Oh, no, the magic gremlins in the machine won't betray me. They won't and rat like, on me. You'd like to think by now that even no, like, the, the not cons computer savvy people would know not to do things that you don't want people to know about on computers that do not personally belong to you. And, like, you save that stuff for the computer that only you use. You would think, but... It's not hard. Just, just watch your porn at home. What's the key... What's the key word in that phrase? You would... What's, what's the word you, there? Yeah. There you, you go. Think. There you yeah. go. Yeah, that's... That's what's missing. Okay. <laughs> Now, we've got one more this week, and um, this one has a video, and, uh, I, and let, let me give you the link so you can go ahead and watch the video, because there's, there's no sound, but uh, this guy is kind of my personal hero. Um, that worries me. They make these uh, unmanned vehicles that uh, check your speed along the highway. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a... a it's it's there there's no people in it but it's got a speed camera in it and if you're speeding it will it'll catch you well this guy um he decided he was kind of pissed about this whole thing and these speed traps and shit and getting caught um but he had a novel way of expressing his uh displeasure and uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna show you the video here this this in the middle of the night 120 a.m um, this was recorded. You see, this is from the uh, unmanned vehicle. Got a camera in it. A car pulls up. And, uh, who is this? What's going on? Come on. Come on out. And, uh, the driver exits his vehicle. It's Mr. Burns from that Alien episode. Yeah, he's wearing nothing but a night shirt. I presume that's a night shirt. And then, ha boom, a boom, a boom, boom, boom. He unloads the fucking gun, and then calmly walks the hell away, <gasps> like a boss, like you do. Now there's no one in the vehicle, thankfully. Now. My question is, like, he's in his jammies, so did he go home, like, did this wake him in the middle of the night? Was, did he wake, like, was he sitting at home watching Matlock reruns and just realize how angry this thing made him and go out? Fuck this shit! This? Like, why, like, why was he out in his pajamas shooting up 
unmanned cop cars. Like, does he drive around like that? Did he just get home and remember that he meant to do that earlier in the day? <laughs> oh, shit, I forgot to go shoot shit <laughs> up. God, stupid me. Honey, Damn where's it. the gun? I gotta I go out. I hate it when I forget to shoot cop cars. Uh, Santa Fe police are looking for the person who shot up an unmanned speed enforcement vehicle. A uh, video released Friday shows a gray-haired man wearing what appears to be a nightshirt pull up in an Audi SUV, uh, walk up the camera equipped vehicle, and fire at least five rounds from a handgun. They still don't know who this guy is. He's just out there. And and uh, I kind of looks like George R. R. Martin. Police asked at anyone with information on the suitor's identity call the non-emergency dispatch line. No! You know, um, no, don't call. I, I am, if you know who that guy is, don't tell him. Nobody snitch. Because I think my world's a little bit more awesome knowing he's out there. No, no, it's not. <laughs> Do you really want some random old man in his jammies running around in the middle of the night shooting things? That makes your world better? That makes my world scarier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Tara. For the love of God, snitch on this guy. <laughs> I I just I'm I am baffled. Because okay, it's a camera. They have evidence. It cameras make evidence. That's what cameras do. So, he's not going to get away forever. How do you just... I, no fucks were given that day? Did he just... You know what? I don't care anymore. That's what I'm asking. Like, he's in his fucking pajamas. Like, was it a dare? Maybe it's a bucket list thing. Maybe. Maybe. I don't... I just... I... Oh, but that's still that that video is amazing. I I love that video because just that is indeed amazing. Unloads it all for good measure, just walks the fuck off like a boss. I I approve. I'm sorry, I just do. I know that's, I shouldn't. That's, that's gonna be you someday. I'm a guy. This is the kind of things guys do. Really? Yeah, we, we shoot things. In your, in your see-through nightshirt? Well, yeah. Because otherwise it'd be silly. I'm really glad you live far away from me. <laughs> Hooray, I'm scaring you this week. <laughs> I, I just... I, I guess the first lesson is if you are going to shoot at someone else's property, uh, make sure there's no recording equipment involved. Yeah. Because, you know... Evidence. They're making... Ditto for if you're going to siphon gas out of a cop car. Yes! Especially... The... Like, bad enough to accidentally let something else make evidence to make your own and put it on the internet. And like, super deluxe dumb. Of all the people to dare like that, you know, that's like, come get me! What you gonna do? They're the cops! They're going to arrest you! That's that's what they're gonna do. I, I, that's that's kind of all they do. Really, that's that's their job. They they go and find people like you and they take them away and put them in a little room to make them unhappy. That's what cubs do. <laughs> we also learned that, you know, no matter how fucking important you think you are, you are not important enough to inconvenience everybody else on the airplane. Yes. If you think that you are, all that means is that you are an enormous dick bag. All of the fuck that guy. All of the fuck that. There's nobody. There's no more. Well, and the other chick. No, I don't want to. I don't want to give up my. I don't want to stop playing words no, with friends. No, no, because yeah, that that. You know, unless you're Alec Baldwin, you're not getting away with that shit. Yeah. And Alec Baldwin shouldn't get away with that. He shit. He didn't get away with that shit. They're like, Mr. Baldwin, sit the fuck down. Shut the fuck up. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the Dalai Lama. Like, just shut off your shit and sit down. Yeah, all of the fuck her. In fact, we, we, we're out of fuck her. We are sold out of fuck her. All of the fuck her. We have to get a new order in. All out. Um, 
We and and speaking of, uh, uh, you know, you may want to take a moral stand on things, but don't stand on your penis. Can you stand on your penis if you're not Jack Palance? Hmm. Anybody in the audience who can stand on your penis, feel free to send Nash pictures and video. I'm just trying to work out the logistics of how... Not me. Send them to Nash. I'm just flashing back to Henry Rollins trying to slam his dick in a, in a toilet bowl, you know? I, how, what are the logistics there? How would that work? I don't know. I don't have a penis. That's why I'm asking you. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I don't know. I haven't attempted it. I don't know the logistics of such a thing, and I'm not going to. Well, that's because, what you have an audience for. Because, well, that and, you know, people normally pay for that sort of thing. Which brings us back to the other thing. Um, the internet may be for porn, but not every computer is. Mm -mm. And... You might be an older generation, you might not know how the things work, but I promise you, the little fairy men who run the magic box will snitch on your ass. If, if you, if you have, if you, you know, if you're confused about these things, just ask your nearest 10 year old. <laughs> they will explain it to you. Yeah, they will. They know that shit now. They're scary, the shit kids know about computers, aren't they? My, like, six-year-old niece and nephew are all, like... My, my six-year-old niece sends me pictures that she makes in a paint program for her dad's iPad. And then she, like, makes a picture and then just emails it to Aunt Tara. And it's adorable, and I love that she does it, but I'm like, she's friggin' six, and she knows how to email Aunt Tara. That's, that's kind of crazy. The kids these days with the technology. We're living in the future. And I, I guess the last thing, um, if you are intent on stealing a police car... And fucking up a cop. Be sure to ask him if he's Jesus first. Make sure and find out. Because, you know. Jesus doesn't like that shit. Mm -mm. He, does, he does not like... You need to make sure you are not dealing with Jesus before you commit a bunch of insane felonies. This was bizarrely tame this week, I think. Really, it was. Yeah. Like, our obligatory naked was kind of totally understandable. Yeah. yeah. Well, not totally... Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll, give, I'll give you that. I'll give I you get that. it. There's, there's an A to B to C. You know, there was a logical progression of events. Either that or we're just getting so hardened to this. We've gotten jaded, yeah. We've got this callus like, on our soul. 